A very good morning. I am Lakshmi Narayana Gunta, PGT in Zoology at AP Modern School and Junior College, Karbanja, Jalmuru Mandal, Srikakulam District. Yesterday, we were discussing overview of alimentary canal and the digestive glands. And the alimentary canal, it starts with mouth and ends with anus. And let us discuss all these parts one by one. The mouth and buccal cavity is the first portion of alimentary canal. And this mouth, as you know, it is guarded by a pair of lips. These lips, they are also called as labia. Okay, one upper lip and one lower lip. They protect the mouth. And through this mouth only, we take in food. That provides us energy. And this mouth, it consists of teeth, tongue, cheeks, palate. This one is the palate, hard palate, soft palate, all these things. Okay. Let us discuss all these things one by one. Human teeth, they are embedded in the sockets of the jawbone. Here, you can observe these are teeth and these are the sockets. These are the sockets. And these, in these sockets, our teeth are embedded. That's why human teeth, they are called as thecodon teeth. Human teeth are called as thecodon teeth as they are embedded in the sockets of the jawbone. And we human beings, we form two sets of teeth in our lifetime. Hence, human teeth, they are called as diphyodont dentition. Humans, they have diphyodont dentition. Means, we have a set of teeth before 12 years. They are called as milk teeth. They are 20 in number. They are 20 in number. These 20 in children, they are called as the milk teeth. Whereas, after the age of 12 years, these milk teeth, they are replaced by permanent teeth. And these permanent teeth, they are 32 in number. They are present in adults. Okay. And one more thing here, you have to keep in mind. That is, the human adults, they have 32 teeth. Whereas, you children, 10th class study, students, you have only 28 teeth. Because this last tooth is called as the wisdom tooth. This wisdom tooth, it arises at the age of 21 years, at around an age of 21 years. Okay, that's why you have only 28 teeth. There are four different types of teeth in humans. That's why human teeth is called, human teeth are called as heterodont. Human teeth are called as heterodont teeth and they are four types. They are, first one are incisors, canines, premolars and molars. These two, these two are called as incisors. And these two also, they are also called as incisors. And this one called as canine. Okay. These incisors, they are chisel shaped, chisel shaped structures and they are meant for cutting. Whereas these canines, they are dagger shaped and they are meant for tearing. They are meant for tearing. And the third type of teeth are premolars. They are meant for Grinding. These premolars, they are flat in shape. They are flat in shape. Also, molars, they are also flat in shape. And these premolars, they are two in number in each of them. And other side also, we have two teeth. They are also premolars. These two and these two, they are premolars. And the last three, they are molars. These premolars, they are meant for grinding. And molars, they are meant for grinding and also for chewing. Okay. These are the different four different types of teeth present in our buccal cavity. And this is the human dental formula ICPM 2123 by 2123. Here, I indicates the incisors, these incisors. C indicates the canines, these canines. Okay. P indicates premolars. M indicates molars. This IC, ICPM 2123 by 2123. This 2123 indicates the upper half jaw. And this 2123 indicates the denominator indicates the lower half jaw. Means in each half jaw, we have 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. Means 8 teeth. Means we have two jaws, the upper jaw and lower jaw. The upper jaw, half jaw, in each half jaw, we have 8 teeth. That is the numerator indicates. Okay. The lower half jaw, we have one more eight. Hence, 
we have 8 plus 8 16 in uh, uh, in lower jaw 8 plus 8 16 in upper jaw means this is the dental formula icpm 2123 by 2123 these canines they are absent in herbivores like cows buffaloes they are well developed Th these canines they are well developed in carnivores like dogs tigers lions etc okay and this is about the teeth and coming to the next part of the buccal cavity of the mouth is tongue tongue it is a freely mobile muscular structure that help in mixing the food and here in this tongue you can observe a number of projections these projections are called as papillae the upper surface of the tongue it bears a number of projections they are called as papillae and these papillae they bear taste buds these taste buds they are responsible for identifying the taste okay based on their location based on their shape these papillae they are classified into three types the fungiform papillae filiform papillae valid papillae or the circumvallate papillae the fungiform papillae the name itself indicates they are mushroom shaped they are mushroom shaped they are present on the margins and the anterior side of the tongue and they are they bear two to eight taste buds and similarly filiform papillae fili means thread like they are thread like they are present on the total surface of the tongue and they are distributed in between these fungiform papillae and they are thread like as they are thread like these filiform papillae they won't bear any taste buds the papillae without taste buds are filiform papillae and the last type of papillae they are the third type of papillae they are valid papillae or circumvallate papillae which are present at the posterior portion of the tongue this is the posterior region and they are arranged in such a way indicating an inverted al alphabet v inverted v shaped structure and they are the uh, largest papillae of, of our tongue and each papillae it may bear up to 200 taste buds okay and here in this picture you can also observe different types of tastes okay the anterior most region of the tongue it bears the taste buds which are responsible for sweet and salt and the posterior region it bears taste buds responsible for bitter taste and similarly the sour taste it is observed in the margins of the tongue okay okay coming to the next part of the alimentary canal the second part is the pharynx pharynx is a common passage both for air and food here you can observe this one is the passage for air and this one is the passage for food both of these air and food they are received into the pharynx this one is the pharynx okay this pharynx it serves as a common passage both for air and food and this pharynx it leads into the food pipe or the esophagus and here in this picture you can observe this one is the hard palate hard palate you can touch your hard palate with the with your tongue and you also observe the, the ridge like structures uh, on the hard palate which are meant for uh, providing grip okay these ridge like structures they are well developed in carnivores okay because carnivores they have to uh, catch the prey and they have to hold it for some time okay that's why these ridge like structures they are well developed in Carnivores. And posterior to this uh, hard palate, there is soft palate, soft palate. Okay. And this is this palate, it forms the roof of our buccal cavity. And the anterior roof, it is hard, and this one is called as hard palate. And the posterior roof, it is soft and soft, and it is called as soft palate. Okay. And this soft palate, it is responsible for swallowing. Okay. The muscular movements of this soft palate it moves the food during swallowing okay and coming to the next part that is the esophagus esophagus is a long tube measuring about 25 to 30 centimeters in length and this esophagus it is a muscular tube and the most important part is here it is 
a collapsed tube. It is a collapsed tube. Unlike that wind pipe. The wind pipe is always an open pipe, but this esophagus is always a closed pipe. When the lumen is empty. And this esophagus, it descends to the thoracic cavity. This region is called as the thoracic cavity. And this esophagus, it opens into a sac-like structure. J.C. put sac-like structure called as the stomach. At, at the opening of the esophagus into stomach, it has a sphincter or a gate called as the cardiac sphincter or the gastroesophageal sphincter. And why it is called as gastroesophageal sphincter means, gaster means stomach. As it is present in between the, in the opening of the esophagus into stomach, it is called as gastroesophageal sphincter. This gastroesophageal sphincter, it allows the food to enter into the stomach from the esophagus, but not vice versa. Okay. This gastroesophageal sphincter, it regulates the opening of esophagus into stomach. Okay. Na? And the next part of the alimentary canal is stomach. This stomach, it is a J-shaped structure. J-shaped structure. And it is a sac-like structure. It is elastic in nature. And this stomach, it is present just below the diaphragm. This one is called as the diaphragm. This one. The dome-shaped structure is called as the diaphragm. And it is present just below the diaphragm on the left side of our body. That's why our elders suggest after if you want to sleep after uh, taking a meal, you have to sleep towards left side. Okay. Because the stomach is located on the left side, just tucked under the lower margin of the liver. This one is the liver and it is tucked under the left margin of the liver. This is the exact location of uh, stomach. And its, its capacity is 1.5 liters of food and the maximum capacity of our stomach is 4 liters. Okay. And this stomach, it has three regions. The cardiac stomach, the pundic stomach, the pyloric stomach. This one is called as the pundic stomach and this one is called as the cardiac stomach. And this one is called as the cardiac stomach. And this one is called as the pyloric stomach. And here also you can observe the another sphincter. This sphincter is called as pyloric sphincter, which is present at the opening of the pyloric stomach into the next chamber of the alimentary canal, that is the small intestine. Okay. Now we are going to discuss the next part of the alimentary canal, that is small intestine. Small intestine, which is also called as the small bubble, is the largest part of the alimentary canal, measuring about 2.7 5 meters in length. And here, the most of the enzymatic digestion takes place inside this small intestine. Okay. Even though it is bigger in size, longer in size, it is called as small intestine because of its lesser diameter when compared with the large intestine. Okay. Large intestine, it has greater diameter. It, has, it is wider when compared with the small intestine. They are narrower and the diameter of the small intestine is very less when compared with the large intestine. That's why even though it is longer in size, it is called as small intestine. Okay. And most of the enzymatic digestion is completed inside this small intestine. It doesn't mean that the small intestine releases all the enzymes, but most of the enzymes released by the pancreas, they play an important role in the digestion, digestion of the nutrients in the small intestine. And almost all absorption of nutrients takes place in this small intestine. The villi which are present in the walls of the finger shaped structures present in the walls of the small intestine, they are responsible for the absorption of the digested food. And this small intestine, it has three divisions, subdivisions. They are, the first one is the duodenum. The U-shaped or C-shaped structure is called as the duodenum. It is the first part of the small intestine. It is the smallest part of the small intestine. Which, is, which accounts for 5 percentage of the total length of the small intestine, which follows the jejunum, the second part of the small intestine. It uh, occupies almost 40 percentage of the total length of the small intestine. And the last part of the small intestine is the ileum. This one is the ileum. This ileum, it joins the large intestine at the cecum. Okay. And the, here, from here onwards, it is called as the large intestine. And now, let us move to the last part of the 
alimentary canal that is the large intestine it is called large intestine because of its diameter diameter it has greater diameter when compared with small intestine and this large intestine the it receives the digested residue digested residue and the main function of this large intestine is to absorb and collect the excess water from the undigested food and also absorb reabsorb the electrolytes electrolytes from the undigested food thereby the feces which is formed in this large intestine it becomes harder okay this large intestine it has again three subdivisions the first one is the cecum the sac like structure is called as the cecum and the second one is called as the colon and the last one is the rectum this one is the rectum and at the junction of the ileum and cecum there is a finger like projection which is called as the vermiform appendix this one is called as the vermiform appendix this vermiform appendix is called is a vestigial organ and this cecum is also a vestigial organ a sac like structure and the first portion of the large intestine is called as cecum why they are called as vestigial means previously these structures they were very helpful to humans as humans previously they used to take the grass leaves etc which are abundant in cellulose and for the digestion of cellulose humans depends upon these uh, vermiform appendix and cecum as now we depend upon glucose uh, carbohydrates proteins fats that's why this cellulose digestion is somewhat difficult that's why we stopped uh, depending upon cellulose digestion as a result these organs they have become vestigial organs now our body human body consists of nearly 180 vestigial organs okay that's why humans they are called as walking museum of antiquities okay we have 180 vestigial organs out of these these 180 this vermiform appendix and this cecum they are also vestigial organs okay and coming to the sphincters this one and coming to the last uh, this portion that is the rectum it has two sphincters the upper sphincter and the lower sphincter this upper sphincter it is involuntary in nature and whereas this lower sphincter is voluntary means whenever the residue digested residue reaches here the upper sphincter it opens automatically it opens it is not under our conscious control okay as a result the feces starts accumulating here inside the chamber okay as the chamber is filled we feel the urge to send it out okay and as a result the lower sphincter it opens means the opening and closing of this lower sphincter is of, is under our conscious control that's why it is called as voluntary sphincter and the upper sphincter or the inner sphincter it is an involuntary sphincter and these are all the parts involved in the alimentary canal okay and uh, we have finished different structures in alimentary canal and tomorrow in our uh, next session we are going to discuss the digestive glands okay thank you for watching follow me on youtube simply by typing lakshminarayana gunda thank you very much